Right, these throttle bodies at the minute are 40.5 at that end, 37.75 at that end, and what he wants is a straight a straight bore through there at 40 mil. I can't get them in the chuck on my lathe uh, because the centre height's too low. What I have to do, I have to bore them on the milling machine. So I have to accurately line that up with the centre uh, bore down through there, and we'll get 40 mil. I'll put up them up on a couple of parallels, so I've got enough clearance to to bore right through. Set them up and clamp them, and then we'll set it up at centre height. Set set it up for the for the centre. So we can get a whole pull through them. There's not a great lot of clearance on the bottom. Across there and across there where I can put the parallels and a couple of clamps on there. By the time this is bought out to 44mm there's not going to be very much material left on there. But it shows me that's what they do. I've got them set up on a couple of parallels and I've got a, a decent nip on them but obviously I can't go too hard taking them down because it's very soft aluminium and um, there's several methods of setting up the centre of that ball there's one very easy method that's what I'm going to show you Right, all I've got, I've got my drill chuck set up in a series of adapters. That's got a taper on, which is a nice fit in there. So all I'm going to do, keep adjusting it and moving it until it's nearly, nearly all the way in. Which is about about there, not quite touching all the way around and all I'll do is simply loosen off the clamp bolts pull the quill down like that and that's got it held dead in line with the, the spindle of the machine, it can't get anything else so we'll nip these back up I can't, I can't tighten them too much because it's very very soft aluminium right so that now is exactly in line with the spindle of the machine we'll lock up the X and Y axis so it can't move I'll also put the DRO on and I'll set the zero. Everything zeroed off. Leave it in millimeters. Everything zeroed off so I know if something does move I can relocate this point. So I've got a reasonable nip on them. There's enough clearance down below for the, the boring tool to come through. Right, the first thing I want to try is see if I've got enough travel on the quill to bore this. And I haven't. It's short by about half an inch. There's a locking bolt there that locks the locks the dovetail. And that's the adjuster bolt there, that's the new adjuster bolt we made. Right, that's just touching there. So we'll put a cut on a 0.2, which should give it 0.4 of a mil. Which is 0.2 aside. Right, we'll lock our dovetail up. Start the mill and gently, gently feed up. That's cut 
and all the way around which means it was set up nice and accurate it's obviously taking more out as it goes further down because the hole is actually tapered Right, that's now at 40 mil. So if I loosen off a, a bar, daily in five divisions, that's half a mil. That should give a, a one mil increase. One, two, three, four, five. That's half a mil per side. We'll put a cut through at that and see how it, see how it feels at that. is 43.7 I've engaged the fine feel on the quill which is going to get us most of the way through I've been going to make a power feed unit for this quill for quite some time now That'll be quite a nice little project. I've got one or two ideas. We'll stop it there and we'll have a, another measure. I've got 49, 43.95. Quite a while that wind is down through here. We'll try and get a nice finish all of it down. As you can see it's putting quite a nice quite a nice finish onto it. <coughs> you can't get much more than that out. The lad wanted 44.5 but without offsetting it you couldn't get it very thin there as well so 44 is obviously the maximum amount you can take out there is a slight venturi effect in the original bore but the being fuel injected it makes no difference just goes straight through straight in the wife bought us a new some new overalls for the shop I tried an apron I don't like aprons I don't really like jackets uh, these are bib braces they're nice and and I've got my collection of pens, a pen and magnet, pen, magnet, and I've got my scraper for Tom Lipton sent us. Nothing to do with engineering or machining. I'm actually cutting some kindling for the fire. So I can show you how this how the wood splits. It's actually pitch pine, the wood's called pitch pine, very straight grained. It's what you use for making boots out of, it's very, very strong that way. It's got natural oil or a natural resin in it that makes it waterproof. The smell is absolutely amazing. Quite amazing how it splits down the length of the grain. 
Ja, die ist bei mir. Ich kenne das.